The Evidence for Evolution Made Easy The science of evolution is under attack by creationists. The majority of them do not even understand what evolution is, how it works, and what the evidence for it is. In this video, I hope to illustrate in simple terms how we know evolution is true. There are several lines of evidence that independently confirm evolution. That's what makes scientists so certain. Any one of these elements could have pointed to something else. But they all converge on the same conclusion, that all species emerged by common descent with modification through natural selection. Moreover, there are no credible, confirmed facts about nature that contradict evolution. Individually, each independent line of evidence I shall discuss very strongly supports evolution. But collectively, when you put all the pieces of the puzzle together, it becomes absurd to imagine that evolution did not happen. Evolution deniers have not provided any credible alternative theory that better explains all this evidence, or actually any of it. Before we get to the evidence, I need to be clear about what evolution is, define some terms, and dispel some misconceptions. I'm not going to be talking about Big Bang cosmology, the age of the Earth, or the beginning of life, called abiogenesis. Those are separate matters with separate evidence. Evolution is the process by which all plants and animals have arisen from a single ancestor that existed in the past. Over the past 3.5 billion years or so, all existing and all extinct species on the Earth have emerged gradually in a nested hierarchy of groups and subgroups, sometimes called the tree of life. A species is best defined as a population of organisms with shared traits that can interbreed but cannot successfully breed with other populations. Throughout the biological history of the earth, new species have emerged from existing species. The change from one species to another is very gradual. No animal ever gives birth to a different species. Genes are molecular units of DNA, by which organisms pass down their traits to their offspring. Changes in the genes of a species caused by mutation, sexual recombination, and genetic drift are passed down to their offspring. Over many generations, these small changes gradually add up to big enough changes that the descendant organism is different enough from its distant ancestor to be called a new species. Like a boy becoming a man, there is no single moment in time we can point to when the change occurred. It is very gradual. Evolution does not predict that a dog will give birth to a cat, or a half-dog, half-cat. It does not work like that. Natural selection is the key driving force of evolution. It is a natural process by which the beneficial changes tend to increase in a species and the detrimental changes tend to decrease. This occurs because those animals best suited to the environment tend to survive and procreate and thus pass down their genes a little bit more than those animals without the best traits. Each successive generation then tends to contain more of the beneficial genes and fewer of the less beneficial genes. Over many generations, this produces new versions of the ancestor animals that have changed features, new features, and even diminished or removed features. As groups of a species migrate to different environments, or the environment changes around them, their descendants tend to adapt differently, thus splitting a species into two or more subspecies. The ancestor species may later become extinct, or it may continue to exist, and may splinter off other new species. Often, one group will change faster than another group, because the selective pressure is greater. This is why we find creatures today that are more like their ancestors than their related species, such as humans and chimps. We share a common ancestor with chimps that was neither chimp nor human, but that ancestor looked more like a chimp than a human, as humans have changed more.
All living species are related to each other, like distant cousins. The more recent the common ancestor, the closer they are related. This is exactly what the evidence shows, as I will explain. Fossils The most tangible and obvious evidence for evolution is the fossil record. It is important to know that the process of fossilization is rare, and therefore the record is very incomplete, and it will always have gaps. Despite this fact, there are a great many species for which we have tremendous fossil evidence of their evolutionary change. The geologic column is what scientists call the layering of sedimentary rocks found all over the Earth. Although it does not exist in a single continuous column that we can see, we do find large segments of those layers exposed at the surface due to erosion and other geologic effects. Because these layer segments overlap each other, scientists have been able to match up the different segments to determine the overall sequence of layers. Multiple overlapping dating methods have been used to date these layers into geologic timescales. Even if you doubt the accuracy of these dating methods, as creationists who don't understand the science behind it do, it does not change the fact that fossils are always found in these layers in the order predicted by evolution. In fact, if we did find any fossils out of sequence, such as a rabbit in the Precambrian layers, which is long before the emergence of any mammal, that would falsify evolution, and we don't find that at all. Lenny Flank describes the fossil sequence like this, quote, The fossil record grades clearly and unmistakably from simple early life forms, which appear early in the geological column, to larger and more anatomically complex forms, which appear later. The sequence of the appearance of various fossil groups, first invertebrates, then simple vertebrates, then jawed fishes, then amphibians, then reptiles, and finally birds and mammals, is exactly what we would expect from evolutionary descent with modification, with the organisms appearing higher in the geological column being the modified descendants of those organisms which appear lower in the column." Unquote. In these layers, we have found many fossils of extinct species that show the unmistakable signs of gradual changes from one form of animal to another. These are called transitional forms. One great example is the evolution of whales. Whales are mammals that live full-time in the ocean. We know from the fossil record that they evolved from four-legged land animals about 50 million years ago. Ambulocetus, which means walking whale, is one of several transitional species between land animals and whales. It had four legs, and it was clearly a water dweller, as its back legs were better adapted for swimming than for walking on land. And it probably swam by undulating its back vertically, as otters and whales do. Scientists consider Ambulocetus to be an early whale because it shares underwater adaptations with them. It had an adaptation in the nose that enabled it to swallow underwater, and its ear bones had a structure like those of whales, enabling it to hear well underwater, the same way that whales do, by picking up vibrations through its jaw. In addition, its teeth are similar to those of early whales. Its fossils have been found in the geologic column before modern whales and after more primitive tetrapod mammals, just as evolution predicts. What's more is we have discovered other transitional forms appearing after Ambulocetus that show the gradual migration of the nostrils from the front of the nose to the back of the head to become the blowhole, which made it possible for them to breathe without lifting their head out of the water. In some whales today, this blowhole is still split into two adjacent holes, and in others it is a single opening. Despite what creationists say, we have numerous other fossil transitional forms. Like Ambulocetus, these species share some traits with their ancestors and some with their descendants, and they are always found in the geologic column in the expected order. Here are just a few. 
showing a transition from fish to tetrapods, we have tiktolic, ichthyostega, and ventastega. From dinosaurs to birds, we have archaeopteryx and sonornis. From synapsids, which were large terrestrial vertebrates, to mammals, we have Dimetrodon and Diarthrignathus. And from primitive apes to humans, we have Artipithecus, Australopithecus, and Homo erectus.